Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about, I guess, myself and, you know, I have criticized Weds and Tolarian Community College for some of the things that I thought were a little crazy, and I'll go into probably the craziest story I have on Weds, but I felt like I should try to do a better job as well. So I'm going to quit Fire Emblem Heroes and that money that I would be saving, which is actually two accounts every month for who knows how much i'll calculate it i'll go back and calculate it although it'd probably be painful to do i'll just donate to gofundmes that i think are worth donating to and or the fire department and or the police department and or the local animal shelter because you know i talk about personal responsibility it's not really that responsible for me to spend money on sprites pretty much and i know i know what that is like i'm not an idiot right i know what's going on so back to and here will be some images at the end of where i live and you know i live here because i do want to help people i do want to give back as much as i can and i feel like i can give more uh, the fire emblem heroes game does not bring me any joy and actually only brings me sadness and sorrow and woe so i'm giving it up to uh, donate to a, a charity and maybe we can do that together on i would donate for us for the channel of course so let me tell you the story of why i kind of turned against weds so weds and i were not always at odds we did actually have a speaking relationship until recently and you know it's been a while since we actually spoke but a long time ago he was on my live streams and that was really fun. So Weds, and again, this will get really personal. Uh, Weds, I watched Weds, and then he proposed to a YouTube or a Twitcher in Florida. And I watched the stream, and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Very cute. You know, I'm a sucker for love stories, Korean dramas in particular. And I was like, oh, that's great. So this person leaves all of her friends, all her, I think, family. I don't know if her family lived with her, but uh, she had friends. And moved from Florida to the middle of nowhere, New York. We're not talking about New York City. We're talking about the middle of nowhere. She doesn't have a car. At that time, she doesn't have a job. Wes doesn't have a job. And they live in his parents' basement or his parents' home. So I felt like, wow, this is going to be an epic love story. I'm going to follow both of these people. And yes, he is on Twitter. Um, and it's not the same Abby who's from the UK. This was before that. And what I expected to happen did not happen. I expected Weds to get really strong, maybe Weds to get a job, to, I don't know, maybe take YouTube more seriously, make some more videos, make some consistent streams. And that didn't happen. Uh, the girlfriend or the person, fiance, I don't know. The proposal was made on Twitch. The proposal was a magic card. I think it was a soul ring or something cheesy like that. I thought it was great at the time. And I know that she wanted a cat. Wedge didn't want to get a cat because responsibility. Um, she had to get her own car. She had to find her own job at a casino, I believe. So this kind of reminded me of like all great Korean drama love stories, except then it takes like a very twisted development. Uh, and and I was like, wow, this is like insane. I, I don't get it. And then twisted development, uh, they end up breaking up. And I think it was because in the two years, I have known Wedge for a long time. Wedge since his channel was five years old. I've known Wedge since the beginning of his channel. And at this time, I expected, all right, he has someone he is, who's dependent on him. Uh, he used to drive her to the casino to work. And she wants a cat. She wants to have her own place. You know, she d doesn't want to live at her f fiance's. I don't know. I mean, the term fiance and married, which I'll get into the later married part, is kind of... I don't know if they actually were engaged or actually, I don't know. But uh, what happened was he never got a place outside his home. He never got, uh, he didn't move out. And 
that relationship broke down. Now, the new one, and this is why I'm really upset at Wedge, because personal responsibility. Legally, when you marry someone, you're responsible for their debt, which is student debt. So Wedge has 40000 Again, I don't know how much student debt he has. Uh, let's say it's 20000 only. Well, as soon as that Abby person marries Wedge, Abby is responsible for all $20,000. That's how the American legal system works. You become one single individual. And even if you divorce, if Wedge doesn't pay back the student loans, Abby is responsible for 100% of the student loans. Not 50, 100. Let me repeat that again. If Wedge brings in $20,000 of student loans into the uh, partnership, like a business partnership, that's how I view, I've been engaged two times and I've viewed it kind of like a business partnership because I don't have any debt and I paid off NYU, <laughs> Royal and Mary Law School and my home mortgage is low. I, I'm not going, I know you guys don't like me bragging about stuff and quote flexing, I guess. So I'll move on. But the legally, you know, someone from the UK marries you, you have medical debt, you have student loan debt, you live at home with your parents, which is fine. I have always said that's okay. A lot of my employees start at home with their parents, but you need a plan. So it's been five years later and there's no plan. There's no like, plan and that's why i think that uh, his previous fiance fiance had just had enough i mean she wanted to get a cat she got a cat she wanted to move to her own apartment she got her own apartment that's what a adult does and for whatever reason that struck me as very very like i don't know why that made me mad but it did because it's not related to me at all but i felt like wow, you know, Wedge is very lucky to have this individual in his life. You need to work hard for, to keep this individual in your life. You can't just kind of coast it, right? And I guess partially the reason I did get mad about that was in my own relationships, uh, I coast. Um, in my first fiance, we were engaged all throughout law school. So that was a long engagement. And then my second one was when I was working for uh, a very big company out in California. And she was a single mom. She had two kids. And that was just too much responsibility. I thought I was ready for having two kids. But, you know, they were age three and five at the time. But I was not. Um, and more power to single moms and more power to people who uh, marry them. And because I, it wasn't for me, I, it's like when I say I have a lot of respect for firefighters, police officers and soldiers and veterans, because that's not something that I can do. Like I can't imagine myself as a firefighter. Like I'm trying to right now and it's hard and I cannot. So more respect to the people who can do that. But I personally am not equipped to, raise two kids at that stage of my life when it was just party this, rave this, and I was living in San Francisco. Like, how was I not going to? Like, okay, I mean, I could have been more responsible, yeah. And I do regret some of the things that, um, I do regret not trying harder to see if it could work out. All right, back to the wedge problem. I don't think they ever discussed finances. They met a GP Vegas and they married. And now this person, if they are married, I don't know if they actually are married, is responsible for all wedges debt, medical. So medical, can you can get rid of that in bankruptcy, but student loans, you cannot get rid, in, rid of in bankruptcy. And again, like I said, if you marry, you are responsible for 100% of that person's student loans. And even if you divorce, you are responsible for 100% of those student loans. Bankruptcy will not save you. So, I don't know. Like, it's, it just seems like, I don't, it just seems like he could work harder and he's just not working harder. And he has every reason to fight and fight and fight, like tooth and nail fight. And it's just like, it's so passive. It's our, our, we can never be friends, right? We could never be friends. Um, his, and I have friends who are very different from me, incredibly different people, but 
the one commonality of it is that they work hard, they try hard, uh, and also this is the neighborhood I live in. I don't live in a very rich place. Like you might look at the home and say, oh, you, you must be, well, no, that's not the case. I choose to live in one of the poorest places in America. You can look at the data, you can look, I know some people don't believe me, but it's data. I live in Humboldt. The zip code doesn't lie. The demographics don't lie. Like you can search it like, and I live here because I want to do the most good. And that's what I wanted to do at this point in my life. And I work really, really hard to small businesses. A lot of these businesses pay me $500. I can take a business, I can take a tech company in San Francisco for $5,000, minimal $5,000, and do the same amount of work. And my reputation is good enough they would hire me, but I would rather do the small local business because money right now, I don't have loans, I don't have car loans. I, I drive a 2008 car. I don't really care about money. And that might sound really crazy for me to say that, but honestly, I've never, I've always lived by the philosophy of develop some skills. People will love you for those skills that, and I do, I've won Google, multiple Google awards. And why would you ever worry about money the rest of your life? There will be people who come and find you and who want to hire you and you can always say no to them. So my point is, it just drives me crazy. Like when someone has so much potential, Wedge has incredible potential uh, and they don't achieve it uh, because I don't know. Um, and that's what I don't get. Anyway, bye guys.